Hi, fellow central bankers, distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to speak to you on this important event. While participants generally embrace technologies and innovation, I guess that two years ago, not many of us could have expected that virtual meetings would become a norm for international conferences like now. So while technological advances would also drive work process or behavioral changes, there are times when societal changes spur technological developments or adoption. Of course, the COVID-19 pandemic has had a lot more impacts than countless virtual meetings. The unprecedented disruptions and contractions in our global trade have literally brought many economies to a standstill. Small and medium-sized enterprises are especially hard hit given the smaller buffers they have. On the other hand, many e-commerce and other online activities are thriving. We are experiencing a much accelerated pace of digitalization on many fronts. These new developments call for central banks' innovation and digital solutions too. In the digital age, central banks will have to become innovators and commit ourselves to digital transformation for the benefit of our economies. In fact, the launch of the BIS Innovation Hub or BIS IH in, 19, in 2019 is a testament to this commitment. For the coming year, BIS IH have announced six thematic priorities for driving innovation and staying ahead of the digital challenges. Now, no doubt, uh, payment has been a key area for innovations in recent years. Traditional payment system have undergone transformation, not least with the introduction of real-time uh, fast payment systems. And new payment methods have emerged in the private sector. Consumers are increasingly reliant on digital payments that offer better speed and convenience. However, when new forms of digital payment are increasingly used by the public or even become the dominant means of payment in society, central banks should rightly be concerned about the resilience of the payment landscape, as disruption could cause not just inconvenience, but also a potentially significant economic damage. At the same time, cryptocurrencies and stablecoins have emerged as a new class of assets that are sometimes claimed to be also a medium of exchange, despite their volatility and concerns about their security. Why sped adoption of these digital currencies by the general public could also diminish the use of the sovereign currency and even affect a central bank's monetary operations. Notwithstanding all these developments, the core role of central banks in ensuring trust in money as a public good for the economy at large remains unchanged. So whether central banks should provide a new form of central bank digital currency, complete with new payment infrastructure to households and business has become a very pertinent question. The subject of central bank digital currencies, CBDCs, be it wholesale or general purpose, has been high on the agenda of central banking community. Apart from being a new and trusted digital means of payment, CBDCs could potentially also foster competition and innovation in the payment sector. Here at the HKMA, we have been exploring technologies for both wholesale and general purpose CBDCs. At the wholesale level, we see great opportunities for CBDCs to enhance the efficiency of cross-border payments. Two years ago, we conducted a proof of concept with the Bank of Thailand to develop a DLT-based cross-border corridor network. Building on this fruitful collaboration and the experience gained, we are taking a further step to create more synergies with other central banks. Under the auspicious of the BIS-IH Hong Kong Center, the HKMA together with the Bank of Thailand, the Central Bank of United Arab Emirates, as well as the Digital Currency Institute of the People's Bank of China, we are embarking on a wholesale CBDC project called Multiple CBDC Bridge, or MCBDC Bridge in short. We aim to, through this MCBDC Bridge, foster a collaborative environment for central banks and the private sector to further explore the potentials of DLT to improve the settlement and liquidity management efficiency in cross-border payments. We are grateful for the participation from the private sector, including two securities exchanges, 
banks and multiple uh, multiple uh, multinational uh, corporates in the project. Such collaborative efforts give us much greater confidence that the ideas and solutions generated through this project will take account of the needs of various market players in different markets. As with many other central banks working on this subject, we are yet to make a decision as to whether general purpose CBDCs will be issued. Indeed, designing a CBDC requires balancing many full considerations, ranging from consumer needs to policy and technological considerations against various potential risks. This could involve difficult trade-offs in decision-making. Therefore, we will study the benefits and challenges of different architectures for the distribution of general purpose CBDCs through commercial banks or payment services providers in our upcoming general purpose CBDC project, uh, which is called Project Aura. Specifically, we will look into two architectural models, namely the hybrid CBDC and private CBDC backed stablecoins. In parallel, we are working with the People's Bank of China on a technical pilot testing of using eCNY for cross-border retail payments in Hong Kong. We are extremely excited about these initiatives on CBDCs on multiple fronts. And I would be very happy to share more findings with you all as we make further progress. Another big area in FinTech is the use of data. It is now already a cliche to say data is a new oil in the digital era. But it's a reality that those who possess the most data and the ability to harvest useful information from them can profit tremendously. As of now, such competence resides mostly in big internet platform com companies. But many data subjects have no way to make better use of their own data or digital footprints, which is data about themselves currently scattered in various different platforms to use this information for their own benefit. For example, SMEs are facing the long-standing problem of having limited access to finance. Conventional credit scoring approaches are not particularly favorable to SMEs because they often lack aud auditable operating data, which large corporations have. This is the advantage hinders not only the growth of SME businesses, but also the stability of our job markets and economic growth. Worse still, the blow of the pandemic has put the survival of many SMEs at stake, and the need for financing is stronger than ever. So is there a way to better empower data subjects to make better use of their own data for their own benefit? With this objective in mind, we are expanding our financial infrastructure to enable data to take the center stage. Our recently launched initiative, the Commercial Data Interchange, is a centralized platform which allows data owners to share their digital footprint voluntarily with banks through data provider in an efficient and secure manner. With a more substantial body of up-to-date and authenticated data shared by SMEs, such as monthly or even daily trading and turnover statistics, banks could use data analytics to perform more accurate credit assessment and then provide more tailored services to SMEs. Through this CDI project, we expect to enhance financial inclusion of SMEs in our banking system and as a result, more efficient financial intermediation. Of course, why the adoption of new technologies by financial institutions is in itself presenting considerable challenges to central banks and regulators. The range of technologies deployed by incumbent banks and virtual banks spans different areas, from remote onboarding to fund transfer and wealth management to rec tech or robo advisory and backend operation and many more. Seeing early signs of payoff, banks have also invested more heavily in technologies such as in blockchain or artificial intelligence to enhance their digital capabilities. As our regulators become more sophisticated in the technology application, central banks and regulators are also enhancing our supervisory and surveillance capabilities, such as making better use of technology and data analytics. 
and implementing internal digital transformation to better equip ourselves in the digital era. If we are able to leverage technologies to enhance our vigilance in risk monitoring and management in real time, the resilience and state stability of the broader financial system could be improved. We in the HKMA are no different, and we are now on a multi-year digitalization journey. This is a huge undertaking, as it involves not only substantial financial investment, but also human resources input at all levels. More importantly, if we were to fully reap the benefits of digitalization, many long-established processes would have to be changed or even abolished. As the existing procedures are usually based on dated legacy systems and manual processes, appropriate use of innovative technologies such as artificial intelligence, cloud platform, or API can surely help refine supervisory processes. For example, our granular data reporting exercise, which started in 2019, seeks to collect transactional level data from banks instead of template-based aggregate data in the past. This has enabled us to discover insights and trends in a timely manner and conduct advanced analysis through slicing and dicing of the data collected, which we never was able to do before. But this is not only possible with very fundamental change in the way we analyze the risk of banks, with new people, new organizational structure, new IT systems, as well as continued experimentation by colleagues with different skills and expertise. One thing we have learned is that the pre prerequisites for such digitalization journey is to have strong commitment by all colleagues from top to bottom and for everyone to have the mindset of embracing changes. Although we are already seeing some concrete positive outcome from our digitalization project, we are still at the early stage of this long journey. I would love to hear the experience of other central banks and regulators at this or other forum. Just now I have highlighted three areas, namely payment and CBDC, use of data and digitalization of our own organization as some of the key challenges many of us are facing. There are many more technological developments in the banking sector that we have to understand, regulate or promote. The BIS has long tradition of being a very good avenue for global central banks and regulators to address common issues like this. And it is clear the visionary decision to set up the BIS IH will serve to provide a valuable focal point for the central banking community in the many years to come. In this regard, I would like to express our full support to the BIS IH to continue promoting collaboration among central banks and delivering ideas and insights that would help the global banking system move with technological developments in an efficient, secure, and sound manner for the benefit of the community at last. Lastly, I wish this summit a great success and thank you all very much. Thank you.